Coming up today, prosecutors indict former Prime Minister Lee Wan Gu and Gyeongsang Namdo Province Governor Hong Jun Pyo on charges of receiving kickbacks from a recently deceased businessman. A North Korean biochemical expert has reportedly defected to Finland, carrying evidence to show the regime conducts inhumane experiments on live human subjects. Plus, the IMF says crisis-ridden Greece needs an extra 60 billion euros in funds and a long grace period to give it any hope of getting back on track. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Friday, July 3rd here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this morning, wrapping up their near three-month-long probe into a major bribery scandal. Prosecutors on Thursday indicted former Prime Minister Lee Wan Gu and incumbent Provincial Governor Hong Jun Pyo on charges of taking bribes from deceased businessman Song Wan Jong. The special prosecution team alleges that E took 27,000 US dollars from Song while he was running for a parliamentary seat in a by-election in April 2013. They also allege Gyeongsang Namdo Province Governor Hong took nearly $90,000 in illegal political funds from Song in June 2011. The investigation team, however, decided against indicting the six other politicians named in a suicide note left by Song, including three former and current presidential chiefs of staff on the grounds of lack of evidence or expiration of the statute of limitations. The team will continue investigating two additional politicians not on the list, six-term Senate Party lawmaker Ian Jay and four-term opposition lawmaker Kim Han Gil on charges of receiving bribes. Now, the main opposition, New Politics Alliance for Democracy, labelled the result disappointing and called for a special investigation to be launched as soon as possible. Both of Korea's largest political parties, the ruling Senate and the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy, are being pulled left and right by internal strife inside their respective parties. The ruling party is split in its backing of floor leader Yoo Seung Min, while the MPAD is fighting over their newly elected Secretary General. Ji Myung Gil has more. The ruling bloc's loyalists to President Park Geun-hye continue to demand the resignation of the party's embattled floor leader, Yoo Seung Min. What's wrong with asking him to resign after he has put the country through such hardship? Senuri Chair Kim Mu-sung suspended Thursday's Supreme Council meeting. Even some pro Park figures said lawmaker Kim Tae-ho crossed the line. I don't think it was right for lawmaker Kim to have lambasted him in that manner. Flow leader Yu sympathizers claim President Park went too far in demanding his resignation after she vetoed the controversial parliamentary bill, saying it violates the principle of checks and balances in government. Yu made it clear that he would not step down and carried out his scheduled party duties. The MPD's full leader, Lee jong go reconveyed his grievances over the appointment of Choi Jae Hong as a party secretary general and ended his nine-day walkout protest, resuming his Supreme Council activities. Chairman Moon Jae-in's appointment of Choi last week was met with criticism, with some opposition lawmakers accusing Choi of not representing the politics of unity and harmony. Che is believed to be part of a faction linked with former President Noh Mui Han. He'll be tasked with preparing for next year's general elections and selecting candidate nominations. Critics like Lee jong Ar say the appointment is a signal that Moon Jae-in's faction will continue to dominate the party. Amid the political disarray, the two parties, however, did agree to open the House Steering Committee meeting on Friday to set dates for future parliamentary business, including auditing government offices, settling accounts and budget proposals. Kim Young-gil, Arirang News.
Now, it has emerged that a North Korean biochemist defected to Europe last month, carrying with him a massive amount of data on human experiments conducted in the communist state. A Seoul-based North Korean human rights group here made the disclosure on Thursday, saying the 47-year-old researcher with the family name E fled to Finland on June 6th via the Philippines. In a phone interview with Seoul's Yonap news agency, the source said that E, who was working at a microbiology research centre in Jagangdo province in the north, defected because he felt sceptical about his research. The researcher is known to be holding a hard drive with 15 gigabytes of information on human medical experiments, which could bring North Korea's inhumane tests to light. The defector is expected to give closed-door testimony before the European Parliament later this month. Staying with North Korea and the country's leader, Kim Jong-un's policies of fear are being felt beyond the regime's borders. According to sources, some mid-level North Korean officials abroad are choosing to defect to South Korea. Connie Kim has more. Has a young North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un's politics of fear, reached such a level that its officials want to escape from the regime? An unnamed source well acquainted with North Korea says that the fear of Kim Jong-un by mid-level North Korean officials abroad has reached a serious point. Serious enough that a significant number of these officials chose to defect to South Korea. As for the higher-ranking members of the regime, the source said high-level officials are less willing to take responsibility for their work to protect themselves from getting into trouble. Another diplomatic source corroborates a source, saying that a low-level official from the North's Labour Party defected to the South, fearing the young leader's reckless leadership. Experts cite a combination of various factors as motivation for the defections. Officials abroad are probably under tremendous pressure to earn foreign currency for the regime. Also, with exposure to capitalist societies, they realize that the North Korean regime is not in a favorable situation and therefore choose to defect. Some analysts say Kim's reign of terror is part of the young leader's methods for reaffirming loyalty to the regime, but some warn that it could add to the regime's instability. Last May, South Korea's National Intelligence Service said Kim Jong-un ordered the execution of Defense Minister Hyun young chul for disrespecting the upper leadership. The spy agency also added that Kim has approved the executions of around 70 senior officials since coming to power in late 2011. Connie Kim, Arirang News. President Park Geun-hye has been seeking support from the world's leading middle powers for South Korea's efforts to achieve a peaceful unification of the two Koreas, inviting parliamentary leaders of the so-called MICTA, namely Mexico, Indonesia, South Korea, Turkey and Australia, to her office. President Park said the five middle powers should be at the forefront of the international response to North Korea's nuclear ambitions. The visiting leaders are in Seoul this week for a MICTA conference. But the Turkish parliamentarian is absent due to an election in that country. President Park also said their cooperation in dealing with global issues like climate change and cybersecurity will help elevate each member, member's uh, reputation and influence on the global stage. More major developments on the Greek debt crisis overnight with a crucial referendum coming up on Sunday. The International Monetary Fund has inflamed the debate by saying Greece's current debt dynamics are unsustainable and Athens needs to get serious about reforms if it hopes to get out of its huge financial hole. The IMF also says Greece needs between 50 to 60 billion euros of extra funds over the next three years and large-scale debt relief to create a breathing space and stabilize the economy. The agency says Greece shouldn't have to pay any debt repayments for 20 years and final payments should not take place until the year 2055. The IMF statement suggests there is a major split between Greece's creditors about what needs to be done. Meanwhile, politicians with Greece's ruling Syriza party continue to push hard for a no vote in Sunday's referendum. Finance Minister Yanis Varoufakis said he will resign if Greece votes to accept bailout terms offered by the EU, the IMF and the European Central Bank. 
British oil giant BP will pay the largest environmental fine in U.S. history for the 2010 Gulf of Mexico oil spill. The company will cough up 18.7 billion U.S. dollars in penalties to the U.S. government and five states to resolve nearly all claims from the so-called Deepwater Horizon disaster. The agreement is on top of the $43.8 billion that BP has already set aside for criminal and civil penalties and cleanup costs. Now, this rig explosion on April 20, 2010, was the worst offshore oil disaster in U.S. history. It killed 11 workers and spewed millions upon millions of barrels of oil into the Gulf for nearly three months, killing countless animals and destroying local communities. Another case of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome was confirmed in Korea overnight, raising the total number of people diagnosed with the disease in the country to 184. The health ministry reported late on Thursday that a nurse in her 20s from Seoul's Samsung Medical Center was confirmed with the virus after a final round of testing. With the latest case, the hospital is responsible for 89 infections, including 14 medical staffers at that hospital. However, the country has reported no additional MERS-related deaths since Tuesday. That leaves the death toll at 33. Out of the confirmed cases, the number of fully recovered patients has risen to 102. 48 patients are currently receiving treatment with 12 in unstable condition. Those subject to quarantine fell slightly to 2,238 people. Now, it should really come as little surprise by now, but Korea's current account surplus is in the black yet again, extending its surplus streak to a record 39 months, well over three years. It's not necessarily good news, though, as recent surpluses have more to do with falling imports than they have to do with rising exports. Kim Minji has more. Korea posted another current account surplus in May. The Bank of Korea says the surplus hit 8.65 billion U.S. dollars, up more than 6 percent from the previous month. With that said, Korea has broken its previous record surplus run of 38 months, which started back in June 1986. The central bank cites low global oil prices as the main cause of the recent surpluses, as it has pulled down import prices. In May, exports fell about 16 percent on-year, while imports dipped nearly 20 percent. But experts also pinpoint the surplus to slowing domestic demand, saying the trend will continue for some time. The impact of the MERS outbreak in the nation on consumption and global oil prices remaining low will be reflected in the figures of coming months. Although a current account surplus can usually be seen as a positive factor for the economy, the experts said that it could also lead to further appreciation of the local currency, raising concerns for Korean exporters who have already lost price competitiveness on the global market. Kim min Arirang News. And more gloomy economic news because sales by Korea's largest companies tumbled by their biggest margin in well over a decade in the first three months of this year as the local economy felt the strain of sluggish domestic demand. And as we heard, sagging exports. Won ji has more. On Thursday, the Bank of Korea released its report on corporate financial performances for the first quarter of 2015. Based on the analysis of more than 3,000 Korean companies, the report showed that the overall corporate sales had fallen by 4.7 percent compared to the same period last year. And when it comes to the company's size, big conglomerates suffer the most with their sales decreasing by 5.5 percent on year. That's the largest reported drop since 2003 when the SARS outbreak took a major blow at the Korean economy. On the other hand, sales at small to mid-sized companies fell slightly by just 0.6 percent. An official from Korea's central bank cited cheaper crude oil and falling prices of exports as the main reasons for the sales drop, which also explains why Korea's petrochemical industry took the biggest hit by losing more than 20 percent of its sales in the first quarter of the year. The official added that the weak Japanese yen and sliding global demands have also made it harder for Korean companies to sell their cars and smartphones. 
Despite their sales loss, Korean companies still managed to become a bit more profitable this year, as the reports show that their operating margins were up by 0.4 percentage points thanks to lower prices of raw materials. Won Ji Hyun, Arirang News. Well, that's all we have for now. I'm Mark Broom. Have a wonderful weekend and thank you, as always, for watching. And we do hope to see you at the same time on Monday. Until then, goodbye.